when we go to the bookshelf at AKA Patterns, we come across something special. Greg Hildenbrandt's Dragons. We're going to grab this one today for today's video for Greg Hildebrandt uh, recently passed away. Uh, today's Saturday showcase uh, is, is going to highlight one of uh, my absolutely favorite books, favorite works from him. He commonly did a lot of work with his brother, Tim. I came aware of Greg and Til Tim Hildebrandt, not through Marvel. Everyone's kind of rushing to a retrospective on Marvel work. For me, it was Star Wars. And I don't have any real good examples of their work to show to you guys, but they worked on Shadows of the Empire. The trading card set, I think they had a couple supplementary prints and posters, maybe some package work. Uh, I wasn't sure if some of their paintings were clipped for some of the Shadows of the Empire packaging. If you're not familiar with Shadows of the Empire, this is before, like, kind of we got a regular flow of Star Wars content. There was, a, like, a gap. There was a gap between Return of the Jedi and essentially what became Star Wars Special Editions and then Star Wars Episode One. But during that gap period, a lot of luminaries, a lot of, you know, and all this, Dash Rendar, the Outrider, this is all good work. But the luminaries of Lucasfilm, they concocted a media rollout, a media rollout of everything but the movie. So you would get audio, video game, toy line, comic books, novels, Shadows of the Empire. And it took place between Empire, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. And kind of filled in some of those story gaps. The artwork of Greg and Tim Hildenbrand and their trading card set by Topps, and Topps had the license for Star Wars at the time. It is awesome, it's amazing, it's spectacular. And then at that point, uh, they did become a part of the look, the feel, and the image of late 90s Marvel Comics. And a lot of you kind of memory hold what their work was. When I was growing up, the fantasy hierarchy was Boris Vallejo, Julie Bell, and then these guys came in underneath. But then what happened was, and Marvel Marvel destroyed it all for Boris Vallejo. Boris Vallejo came on to Marvel, did Marvel work. So did Julie Bell to somewhat of a success because they came from a hardcore fantasy, fantasy calendar, fantasy imagery, fantasy trade paperback. Uh, background. They they couldn't really grasp the superhero ness. I know, that, right? But Greg and Tim Hildenbrand, they did Marvel twenty ninety nine. They did Marvel proper at the time. They could pivot even around the different continuities and realities of the Marvel universe and spit something out. And a lot of times they would do low angles. They did high angles. They did interesting shots. They did stuff in your face. You know, a lot of that Kirby stuff that we're all drawn to. Trading card set, all of it. They, at that point, became the preeminent fantasy illustrators of their time. Getting linked all the way back to Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, through a fantasy career, landing at Marvel, landing at Star Wars, and then continuing on. Uh, I remember they did an amazing cover for Ash for Event Comics. Uh, they were just all around comics during this time. And for a lot of you, you guys might view them as comic book illustrators. But they're really fantasy illustrators. And we're going to highlight that today because this is one hell of a cool book. So, AKA Patterns, in remember remembrance, can I say that, of Greg Hildebrandt, who recently passed away... We're just going to say thank you and have a look. AKA Powders, welcome to the, the hell of my drawing table. Uh, not a good week here. Uh, we've just been super busy. Uh, I literally just, we shot this. I live streamed from the sketchbook. 
and how to leave it. So this is all within a super, super big run. <laughs> Guys, uh, say hello to the Iron Man Eraser. And it's been a bit, but give your greetings to Crypt. I don't know where Pike is. Pike left the drawing table. So Greg and Tim Hildebrandt. Greg just passed. I don't like getting into the reasons why people leave us. I just want to remember who they were. And we're kind of in a time where a lot of these guys passing were impactful to me. Because I was there uh, when they were solidifying parts of their career. And just as a fan, as a person that studied the practice. Uh, yeah, these things are impactful. But real quick though, look at the the face of that troll so this is what a lot of people associate with greg and tim hildebrand before the marvel work i got this i mean you guys can see i mean it is unglued and separating but i got this at a flea market a long time ago for only a couple dollars i always kept on i uh, held on to it after a series of left and right turns down narrow New Jersey lanes. Here we go. <laughs> and we get into some of their uh, studio work. Pictures, references. Now, I know there's so much back and forth about references nowadays. When these guys use references, you couldn't tell they were using references. And, and there was only every once in a while that, uh, yeah, you could tell for sure. But here we go. We got some... Uh, some of their poster series here. I think these were Grimm's uh, fairy tales. They did a lot of chemistry 101. So they kind of did fables. They, a lot of the industry, and we saw this with our HR Giger book, a lot of the industry at the time was posters. So like you were, you, you got hired for trade paperback covers, you did a calendar, you did posters. But this is them. Doing Lord of the Rings. And they would develop. Look this is. Uh, Ewan. And the Nias Ghoul. And look, look how they draw the usurper. Right like those. The Lord of the Rings movies really do program. They program you. How to look at these. Look, look this is their smog. I mean still good though. And the, you see. They did the, the reflections. Because his whole belly. Is just covered with treasure and coins but they would kind of develop a high contrast style that's not really seen here we get shades of it like back here so they were kind of split the figure very effectively and they were able to double light and you guys might see that with a lot of the work that I do that's kind of where I get some of my double lighting from Old Man Willow, Gollum. But as we progress through here, and we all, we can't say that they've drawn, drawn these or they're displaying these or showing these off in somewhat of a production continuity. But we do see a transition to where, again, I was just mentioning, mentioning earlier, contrast. So we have the blues and we have the yellows here. Contrast. And yeah, and it's crazy because people will, they will go into movie posters right or dvd covers and when, when a graphic designer uses this contrast people call it cheap but when you're painting it's it's harmonious yeah and this is what a generation the generation prior this was their introduction to greg and tim hildenbrandt oh my god here we go my name is legion that that looks like uh gord from the day that the earth stood still. And these are a lot of their covers. There has never been a comprehensive retrospective on their arc. It's You have to cobble together a lot of different books. Look, this is Bob Dylan. But it's striking, powerful stuff. And, and yes, they did do a original poster. This was, I, I just remember this not being circulated. And I want to say, I think Star Wars got re-released. You know, around, maybe like around the time of Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi. And for the re-release, they used the poster. I'm not 100% on 
the use of that. But let me see here. I do have I do have a Shadows of the Empire book here that you guys were able to see before. We can maybe try and flip through this real quick. This is all I, I have this in one comic from Shadows of the Empire. The AKA Powders know how. See, look, isn't this cool? Look, the music of Shadows. Like, is it, it's amazing. They did a soundtrack for a book. I don't know if they're featured in here. I don't think they are too much. They feature the comic. Let's see. Well, here's them right here. Yeah, working on some of the promo pieces. They wanted uh, movie level quality posters and just overall imagery. They got, so without that, I don't wanna go into the other people. So that's, wow, of all that entire book, we only got a little glimpse of Greg and Tim working. So this is Greg and Tim Hildebrandt's book of three-dimensional dragons. We see the perfection of that contrast. Yellow, blue, double highlights. And here we go, boom. This really gave me a love of pop-up books. When you go into the production of pop-up books and you kind of see how they're designed, there's an engineering aspect and you you don't paint the image. Like you paint everything flat in pieces and then it's assembled through the production. But this was also too, they did like a lot of like purple backgrounds during this time. And you guys should take a note. Look, look at that swirly tail. You should take a note that dragons were like Alice Spencer gifts. They were associated with potheads. They were just associated with, I don't know, people that didn't want to have a career in life, I guess. I, I love this real quick, though. The This is what people believe the pyramids actually looked like. They believed that they were, um, I think it was like ivory. Not ivory, but... Like white marble, maybe. I don't know what, what stones they had access to, but with gold tips. And you see this in the Brian Singer uh, X Men Apocalypse. They kind of bring this version, this believed version of the pyramids back. But so when McFarlane and Tories, McFarlane and Tories did a dragon line, which popped. And I think they, they brought them back because, again, people kind of were looking back saying, why don't we have more dragon figures? Uh, at one time, the visual of dragons was you had Dragon Slayer as a movie. You, and then it's like you had to wait <laughs> until like the Lord of the Ring movies, the Harry Potter movies, and then Game of Thrones, and then kind of like, you know, like on screen dragons. You know, you had that. What was the movie with Matthew McConaughey uh, with, and Christian Bale where, where they fight the dragon? But the dragons in cinema was far and few between. This one's insane. The dragon of St. George. And some of it, some of the, like, the real stuff to pay attention to is how they handle the, uh, you know, the blurred light in the background. Or the, uh, if you're a flat earther, the fir firmament. I'm not a flat earther, by the way, guys. I, I'm just fascinated with some of those debates. <laughs> but no, like, you go into the horizon and things become blurry. Because, right... That's the way how atmosphere works. But I love this. I remember buying this book, though. And this is like the big finale. The Chinese dragon. Look at that sunset, though. See how, like, the highlights? I think they did such a good job in conceiving this. But I remember buying this at a Barnes & Noble for only a few dollars. And I walked by it, and, you know, like the Hildenbrunts. So, so I picked it up. And the sad thing is, I think when you do some initial searches for Greg and Tim Hilden Rain's book on Amazon, this doesn't even populate. Uh, I don't know what the resale is, if it does have any resale value, but it's been in the library for a long time. 
And yeah, just we're just remembering Greg rocking and rolling. <laughs>